this first case right here. Now we're jumping to the second case right here. It says right here in the second case, uh, let's see, one addressed to former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, that mail package, remember, and another to former President Barack Obama. Four more would be found before the end of the day, including one sent to CNN's New York Bureau, prompting the evacuation of the entire building, Time Warner Center. The package sent to CNN, the first of two, was addressed to former CIA Director John Brennan. On Friday came word of more packages than an arrest. A 56-year-old Florida man named Caesar Sayak, Fleder uh, federal authorities said he mailed a total of 14 packages containing pipe bombs, none of which detonated, but all of which were real. Sayak's political inclinations were passionately displayed for everyone to see. His white Dodge van was plastered with pro-Trump messages and stickers showing prominent liberals in crosshairs. A sticker reading CNN sucks was also on the van. A former boss said Sayak called himself a white supreme a supremacist. Online with two accounts on Facebook and three on Twitter, Sayak often posted provocative photos and memes attacking liberals along with conspiracy theories. And some of those photos include Jesus Christ opening up his arms. So it should be a sympathetic Christian photo. And then over there, he's against abortion as well. He says pro-life. So you see right here now, this other terrorist mailed packages, right? So basically, in people's mind, a bomber mailing bomb packages. Bomber mails to Democrats. And has Christian, they didn't say that, well they saw it, they showed it on the photo, it's all Christian stickers. Has Christian bumper stickers as well as, you'll notice, he has what? He has several accounts online. Okay, what do you think a person's mind is thinking now? After that. Oh, by the way, he's into conspiracy theories too. Okay, so let's look at a third case right here. A third case. Massacre in a synagogue. Saturday morning brought news of a mass shooting at a Pittsburgh synagogue where congregants had gathered for services. <clears throat> a man shouting anti-Semitic slurs ran inside the Tree of Life synagogue in the close-knit neighborhood of Squirrel Hill and opened fire, killing 11 people. Six people were injured in the attack, but it left many more hurting. Uh, you'll notice right here, let's see, he wrote yada, 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 yada. A law enforcement source told CNN that investigators believe that other anti-Semitic posts on a Gab account belong to Bowers. The language on the account matches the suspected motivation behind the shootings, the source said. Bowers also posted xenophobic content claiming Jews were helping transport members of the migrant caravans in Latin America. And then, uh, let's see right here. The suspect is believed to have posted that he can't sit by and watch my people get slaughtered. Screw your optics, I'm going in. <clears throat> so you'll see right here that he has a social media platform. So anti-Semitic. He killed 11 people. I think it says that he shot, right? So he has a gun, yeah. So anti-Semitic, and then he has a gun. Not only that, he has social media. Now think about this, when people think about this and they get, what would their reaction be? They get worried and concerned. The natural reaction is, we should have more control over these things that can happen. That way this doesn't happen again. So how are you going to have more control so this doesn't happen again? Well, let's take control more of social media, right? That's one. So, we see right here, freedom of speech can be an issue then. 
So then right here, one is social media. Let's keep tabs on the social media. That's why there are some social medias, they get a little paranoid, and they, what, they're disabling a lot of the accounts now. You've heard about Alex Jones. It was a matter of time he was going to get out. That, that was no doubt about it. So I knew that was going to happen. There was no doubt about it. So social media, that's one. Let's take control of that. What's another thing? Ah, see another keyword here. See this? So now we get gun control here. So they want to get rid of guns eventually. Let's ban the guns. That way we can all have a safe world. So banning guns and taking away freedom of speech eventually, perhaps. Ah, what, what about this one? See? The Jews are in control of everything. They're the ones to be blamed, and thus it produces an anti-Semitic spirit. Uh, the government cannot be trusted. There are so many evil things going on over there. And then this guy is mailing <laughs> packages to even the intelligence agencies. You know, who in their right mind would do that? <laughs> but see? This is what they're thinking. And not only that, it's what? Uh, they're against Democrats, these guys. This guy's a conservative. He's a, probably a Republican or a Tea Party member. Uh, he has Christian bumper stickers here about pro-life, about Jesus opening up his arms like this, giving them a chance to get saved. See that? And obviously, they're going to dub this white man. That way, they can always find a way to escape it. Christianity is always blamed on the white group people. They want to give that impression. That way different nationalities can be scared away from Christianity. Can I tell you something, folks? You're not going to stop different countries around the world from accepting the Lord Jesus Christ for their salvation. There are so many people who will become Christians. Our church, despite of how small it is, majority is minority group people, different nationalities. That speaks volumes for you. Not only that, we're, we got missionaries around the world reaching those people. And different, all kinds of different nations, different languages. They're getting saved in Jesus Christ. Me, I'm not a white man, so you can't put the blame on me. But anyway, so the thing is right here, is that that's the aim. What do you think the Antichrist, what do you think this is going to eventually aim for? See, when you got, get these things marked down, eventually you can see this is what the Antichrist would want eventually one day, right? So what is the New World Order's accomplishment? The New World Order's accomplishment is to control the whole world, right? So the world is dominated, the world is controlled, as well as the Christianity and the Bible is smothered. So Christianity is negated. That's the ultimate goal of the Antichrist kingdom, right? Well, how is he going to do that? Ah, but think about it. This, this is all you need to do to accomplish all this eventually. So number one, let's take away freedom of speech. So what you post online, we can take more control over it. What you preach, what you teach about, especially when it covers conspiracy, see? And then, ooh, red flag, let's keep an eye on this person now. Oh, he mentioned about a political party, Democrat. Let's keep an eye on that one. By the way, it doesn't matter which party you are, Republican, Democrat, whatnot, we don't care. Every party has faults. We, we go by the word of God, not by political party. We believe that's our salvation, see. So it doesn't matter to us. But see, they're labeling, they're aiming us. So they're going to keep freedom of speech. Oh, you said something bad about Obama, Hillary, et cetera, et cetera. But we're just preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. No. Oh, what you said was kind of anti-Semitic right there. Another thing right here is that what they're going to do is that they, what do they want to do? They want to ban guns. So that what? So that when the tribulation happens, they can get more of a control over you. You can't defend yourself. You can't run or hide, especially when the Antichrist is going to come out and get you. So you can't protect yourself. Because why? You're trusting the government to take care of you. The government will protect you. Here's another one. Uh, eventually, what happens? So freedom of speech is limited online, as well as visitation and street preaching. So we can't do soul winning anymore. No. Yeah. We can't do that. Uh, remember, so notice this guy was mailing things, right? Because he was mailing things, 
it would kind of make sense why they have a big deal about putting stuff in the mail. So we can't leave tracks and stuff like that in the mail because there's dangerous items. So you see, I'm not saying that they have good reasons. They do have good reasons to put limitations and security on this. But you see, Satan, he will always try to find a good reason so that he can accomplish his end goal. And look at this so far, right? So you ban guns. Not only that, Christianity is frowned upon. You saw that, right? I mean, this guy had all kinds of Christian stickers, etc. Not only that, they're going to dub this as a white man. That's what their tactic is. Their tactic is to dub Christianity with the white man. And they think that by doing that, that's why when you get a lot of different minorities who immigrate into America or even around the world, they can side in with our corrupted, uh, with our corrupted political government leaders. By making Christianity like a white man thing, it's supposed to scare you and not make you a Christian. So by doing this, you see how it's uh, aiming one by one by one what they're going to do. Now, what is Christianity like? Well, this is not Christianity, folks. We're going to look at Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Are, are we anti-Semitic? No, but there are some wicked, godless, evil people there who shame themselves by calling them KJV, only as independent fundamental Baptists, and they just brought the New World Order even harder upon us. Those wicked, evil people out there who are anti-Semitic. And because of that, they're labeling us, Bible believers, with that kind of bunch. See, these terrorists, that's what they're trying to do. Look at Romans chapter 12. Look, look at what the Word of God says right here. What are Christians supposed to do concerning enemies? So this should show how we treat enemies, not just people, but even enemies. Does this sound like a harmful bunch of people? Verse 14. Bless them which what? Persecute you. Bless and what? curse not. Look at verse 20 through 21. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire of he on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with what? Good. All right. Are we supposed to mail, mail packages? Is that what we're supposed to do? With, uh, bo with, with dangerous, dangerous things inside it? Are we supposed to take out guns and shoot down people? No. Not even on our enemies, it said. Now look at 1 Corinthians chapter 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Not only that, we're supposed to be all men to all means that we might win some. Yeah. See, we're supposed to go down at their level in order to introduce them to Christianity. That's what the Bible shows. What kind of harmful people would do that? That we would humble ourselves to meet down to their understanding, their level, and minister to them at their level. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Notice right here, verse 19. For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself, what? Servant unto all, that I might gain the more. And unto the Jews, I became as an anti-Semite and shot down Jews. Is that what it said? No. Unto the Jews, I became as a Jew. See, we're totally against anti-Semitism. That I might gain the Jews. To them that are under the law, as under the law. That I might gain them that are under the law. Not only that, People who are not Jewish as well, to them that are without law as without law. Being not without law to God, but under the law to Christ. That I might gain them that are without law. To the weak became I as weak, that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to what? All men, that I might by all means save some. And this I do for the gospel's sake. Why would they limit our freedom of speech when it relates to the gospel of Jesus Christ? We're trying to minister to them at their own level. Here's another one. Look at 1 Timothy chapter 2. Oh, people don't like this one. 1 Timothy 2. I pray for Barack Obama to die. That idiotic, demon-possessed, stupid pastor out there. Who would pray for something silly and stupid like that? That's not what we do. You know what the Bible says what we do? Now, do we approve? Are we saying we approve of their sin, of their actions? No, that's not what we pray for. Oh, God, please bless our president, even though he was committing a lot of immoral actions 
even though the, uh, the president was doing all kinds of simple things? No, we don't do that for Republican or Democrat or any president. Amen. We don't do that. No, we do speak out. We do speak out on what is wrong. But we do pray for them. Be why do we pray for them? So that they can, one, get saved, and two, because we're living under their reign. And I'm sure you want to make it as comfortable as possible. All right? You better thank God you got it made to still street preach and do door knocking. Amen. I know that America is falling apart, but you still better thank God that the president and some people in the Senate and etc., they're still giving us that freedom, that privilege. We got to keep praying for that, see? Look at 1 Timothy 2. I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayer, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for who? All men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a what? Shoot down people. Kill. No, a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Wow, does that sound like these group, three cases right here? Is, is that what Christians are supposed to be? Like those three cases we saw? No, absolutely not. But why would the newspapers give these kind of wording so that people can... Did you notice people are trying to push this? They are, right? They're trying to t limit the freedom of speech. Banning guns, Christianity is frowned upon in a white man. Isn't majority of people in America, land of the free and home of the brave, isn't that what's going on right now with m most people? Yeah. So isn't the devil accomplishing something? That's his ultimate accomplishment. But you know what Bible-believing Christians should do? We should stand. And we should stand for peace. And when we pray and when we do soul winning, we do it all in peace. That is our mentality. That is our goal. It doesn't mean that we act like little slaves and follow whatever they say. No, we ought to obey God rather than men. We draw the line and say we're not going to follow it because why? We have the right to disagree. Amen. Obviously, America should have enough common sense not to limit our freedom on what we believe in our doctrine. So when it comes to doctrine, they should give us the freedom. So because of that, we're going to live in that. But other than that, we respect the authority and we follow it. Romans 13 as well. Romans 13, boy, people hate that. Romans 13. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinances of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Would thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. So you'll notice right here that we're supposed to subject to those who are in authority, Paul said. And you know who was in charge that time? Nero. Nero was persecuting Christians. And Paul says, submit under the authority. Do you think Paul was being stupid, saying, follow what Nero says in obeying their Roman gods and uh, dismantling your Christianity? No, Paul had common sense. He knew what he was talking about. He was talking about when it does not conflict Christian doctrine and faith, that they were supposed to submit to the government powers that be, even paying taxes. Yeah. I mean, it said right here that at verse 6, to pay, pay them tribute also. Who wants to do that? I don't want to do that, all right? But that's just life. So you got to realize this. This is Christianity. That's what we live in today. But Satan, he's bringing this new world order. And as long as you control the world and Christianity is negated, then what can happen? You can go ahead and follow the Antichrist. That's the end result.